Hello ladies and sirs and welcome to the prop vlog. This week we're going to be cutting helmets in half, a bit of lighting but not of the prop variety and a spot of painting. But first, after all of the cutting out that I did last week, the workshop was very very dusty and it was in need of a big clean. So that's what I decided to do. And it was a good excuse to test out time lapses, I've never done one before. So here's me triple timing it as I tidy the workshop. Hey there guys, in between doing some other projects I extended my workstation a little bit towards the end of my door and totally forgot to film it, so oops. But anyway, back to the NCR Ranger helmets. Um, now that the painting and weathering is finished, I've now got to cut these things in half so people can actually fit their heads inside them. Now, because of the curved lines on this that I have to cut out, I'm going to be using one of these metal bits here, uh, surely because it'll give me the flexibility I need while I'm cutting. Uh, there are other cutting bits like I've used, like this carbon fibre cutting wheel here, but because of the nature of the curved cuts I've got to do, I don't want something like this to shatter, so the metal one's far safer. separate pieces. <coughs> Dust. Now for the edge of these I just need a fine grain sandpaper. You don't want anything too harsh because you're not you're not trying to chew through a good amount of resin. It's just smoothing off these cut areas here that might be a little sharp to the touch. That's all the sections all cut in half now. I've uh, sanded them down, smoothed them out. I just need to start fitting the magnetic clasps so you can put the front and back together. Now in between projects I decided to fit a lamp to my new paint station area in the workshop. Now, as I mentioned earlier I expanded my workbench to the end here to create this new white table area that's going to be my new painting station. Now this is all good and set up but I really need to add a movable spotlight like I've got over my main counter here so that's what I'm going to be doing next for this. This spotlight here basically bracketed on the edge of my counter, it's, it's a bit wasted where it is so I'm going to move it over here and actually give it a good practical use so I can spotlight while I'm painting. Figuring I'm going to put the lamp around about here but because I have this lamp on the wall right here and because I like symmetry I want them to be the same so I need to measure how far this is off the counter. Yeah. Yeah. From the counter to the bottom of this bracket, 36 and a half centimetres. Sorry, 14 and one quarter inch. So, right, let's go from there. So 14 and one quarter inches around there. So yeah, 14 and one quarter inches. Um, I'm going to drill it into the brick as opposed to the door frame just so it doesn't end up catching on the door or anything stupid. So let's go drill and make some holes. There we go. First hole. Let's get rid of this dust. Next up, put the plugs in for the screws. Okay. And we line up the light mounting bracket. Two screws in place. And drill it into the wall. And there we go. Nice and secure. Plug. Damn bracket. Relatively painless. Right then, just gonna stick this in here, slide that into place, and then remount 
tension springs. One, two. There we go. I'm just going to glue the back of the light switch with a little hot glue just to keep it in position on the wall. Stop it swinging out into the door. Hot glue is great for stuff like this because if I ever wanted to move the lamp in the future, I can just pull it off and it's not going to take anything with it. And there we go. Nice and fitted. It's not going to go anywhere. Good amount of movement for where I need it for. I can actually position it on my pillar drill when I'm using it as well. It's in a much better position than just sat on the corner of my workshop. So that's that sorted. I can get on with another project now. I think for now this is going to do great. Eventually I'm going to build like a little wooden frame here so I can mount my airbrush paints and things like stack them floor to ceiling. But for now it's good. So once that was done it was time for me to jump back into wiring but this time of the prop variety and actually fit the wires and the lights for the helmets and tidied up the interiors with a spot of black paint. Right, I'm going to now jump back into sorting out the wiring for these lights. Uh, as you can see they're mostly done but I had a bit of a problem. Basically, I'd run out of battery clips to attach these and the switches, so I had to wait for them to arrive, but luckily, they're here, so I can actually get started on them again. So now I can finally break out my soldering stuff and finally finish these little lamp light circuit things. If you do any basic soldering yourself, get yourself one of these soldering arms. They're dirt cheap and they're so incredibly useful for small little projects like this. As you can see, I've got the switch clamped in place with the wire touching, so all I need to do is uh, add a bit of solder and just rinse and repeat throughout all the circuits. And there we go, just get the solder in place and move in the tip of the soldering iron. And feed in a bead. Because of the low voltage nature of these circuits, the thing doesn't have to be pretty, but as long as it holds and the connection won't break, it'd be more than functional. Now we've got the battery clipped into place, so just put the tip of the soldering iron there and just feed in a little bead solder. And there we go, little basic circuit. Here we are with our first little switch soldered up. The first line here leads into the LED and the second line here is the positive uh, for the battery clip. That's the first circuit completed. Uh, they run off 9 volt batteries, so you could basically run this at a convention all day and the power is not going to drain out and you get a really good intense light. Once the circuit's all put together and installed, it looks something like this with the red LED up the top, the main lamp section in the bottom and the switch obviously protruding out. Right, to seal and insulate these circuits, I'm going to pour in a little bit of hot glue into the recesses and that'll keep everything in place and like I say, it'll just uh, create a really good insulation barrier. There we go with the recesses all filled in with the glue. Like I said, it just could create really good insulation. It keeps everything nice and secure. So I just need to paint the inside of the helmets now with some black spray paint. For spraying the inside of the helmets, I like to use um, MTN or Montana Colors uh, Black 94. Uh, it's a really good durable paint and uh, it's great for the inside of these helmets. It dries fairly quick and it gives really good coverage. As always with spray paint like this, make sure that you put on a respirator. There we go. And I just spray inside and only go around the edges first and then work my way inwards. I'm not too worried about the spray bleed going outside of the edges because it'll just basically add to the weathering effect anyway. So, As you can see it gives really really good coverage with just one coat and you don't really need primer underneath this either. It's, it's amazingly good and a really really durable paint. So um, I'm just going to stick this to one side to dry and then continue the process of installing the switches and everything with the other helmets and paint and just repeat it until they're all done. I just thought I'd show you an example of what the helmet looks like when the paint's dry on the inside. It gives a really nice satin sheen and like I said it's, it's really really good durable paint. Um, the only thing I really need to do now is um, sort out covering the areas where the glue are just with a little bit of foam. It, it just helps again with the insulation and just tidies it up. Um, for the customer as well. And while the paint was drying on the helmets, I decided to fit the mesh areas on the mask. So that would be the front air pod, the side air pod, and the ear section. With most electronics fitted in the helmets, I need to do a few bits for the mask. So I'm going to cut these mesh sections out for the ears, the front vents, and the side pod. 
please forgive the Irish rain at the moment. Um, but yeah, um, I use the templates to mark out the areas I need to cut out onto the mesh and then just cut them out with scissors. And as you can see, just by test fitting the outside section here, it fits nice and snug, which is exactly what I want. So this will actually be fitted on the inside, like this. I just have to repeat the process for the, the front vent and this earpiece. Sometimes when I'm doing the intricate parts like this, I'll hold the template in place just cut around it just to be safe basically once everything's cut out I like to test fit them to make sure that they fit into place correctly and I don't need to trim off any excess and then they'll be glued into place put the mesh in place there's enough of a gap around and I simply just take a hot glue gun and just glue around the edges um, it doesn't really need much more than that I could put silicone in this but it's not a load bearing thing it's, it's just there as a visual thing so glue, glue for this is fine try and create a nice even bead all the way around the edge while just keeping it in place to try and keep it as neat and as tidy as possible and then once all these are put in place I go over them with the same black paint that I used on the inside of the helmets just to give them a really nice clean look on the inside so once all the vents and everything are fitted I mask off the areas where I'm going to put the strapping later and then I just coat the high entire inside of this with a nice coat of black paint as you can see it's quite grubby inside here after you do everything else that has been done to the helmet so a good coat of satin black paint just evens everything out and just gives it a really nice finish and there we are just need to leave that to dry if you're wondering why i don't actually install the straps first it's because when you're trying to paint everything like this uh, they just get in the way so i just install them afterwards so guys, once again, thank you very much for watching this week. Why not hit this video with a like, hit the subscribe button and share it around the place and leave a comment down below um, and let us know what you thought and uh, what you'd like to see in the future from us. Uh, I'll be back next week with a new vlog video and there should be a new Jay Stuff video up this week as well. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye.